Hello, my name is P.O.I. Dry. Today I'm going to present our work on anomaly detection for autonomous systems as part of the 2020 Signal Processing Cup. This work was done with David Ben Said and Samuel Sandrovic under the, the guidance of Pavel Lifshitz and the supervision of Yari Moshe at the Signal and Image Processing Lab at Technion. Our goal was to detect different types of anomalies in autonomous systems, such as drones or autonomous vehicles. We see here an example of, uh, of drone data provided in the competition. To the left, we have the video taken by the drone, and to the right, the, flight, the drone flight trajectory during uh, the shooting. The setup of the competition is completely unsupervised, which means that data labels cannot be used at all. This data poses several challenges. Uh, first, it comes from different modalities, video and IMU, and sampled non-uniformly at different sampling rates. Second, uh, the measurements contain noise. There is a very small amount of data available, only 12 short drone flights. And finally, by definition, not all type of anomalies are known in advance. So it is a challenge to generalize to different type of possible anomalies and, and additional data. In our solution, we propose a general framework for anomaly detection of multimodal data. It can be used not only with the data provided in SPCAP, but also with completely different data sets and signal types, as we will show later. So the heart of our solution is a novel distance metric. Using this metric, we can expect normal points to cluster, while abnormal points are expected to appear further away from the cluster. The data we have is high dimensional, so we have to reduce its dimension. We do this by embedding to a lower dimension manifold using a kernel function. Kernel functions are very attractive for this purpose because they naturally accommodate nonlinear relationships between data and can capture the dynamics of time series. This strategy is based on ongoing research in our lab. Our solution has several attractive properties. It's data agnostic and model free. This means that it's not dependent on the domain of the data and that no analytical description of the system is needed. So, Let's take a look as, at a naive solution that doesn't have these properties. It looks at the variance of the z-axis angular velocity channel. As we can see from the anomaly score on the right, this method leads to good results in detecting the drone flips. However, it's data dependent and uses a model of the system, assuming that a drone flip is some kind of abnormal event. So it's a tailored solution. It overfits the specific data set and cannot generalize to different types of anomalies and additional data. Our solution is also online, which means that it processes the input in a serial manner. And the last three properties of our solution are that it's computationally efficient, it can work with a limited amount of data, as in this competition, and that it is robust. Robust since it has only a few hyperparameters and is not very sensitive to selection of their values. And when you think about it, these three last properties are very attractive compared to solutions based on deep neural networks, for example, that have recently become popular. So how does it work? We are working on time windows. Each of these windows contains the data from all channels. We embed all the windows in a lower dimension using a kernel distance. The resulting kernel matrices are symmetric and positive definite. Therefore, they live on an open convex cone with a known non-Euclidean geometry and a Riemannian metric. Such a manifold has a unique geodesic curve between any two points. The curve defines the Riemannian distance on the manifold. So for example, uh, if you take two points, P1 and P2, you can see the geodesic curve in a blue dashed line. The length of this curve is the distance that we will use as a measure of abnormality. So let's visualize this. We start by looking at a three-dimensional visualization of the Euclidean distance. Blue points represent kernel matrices from normal bags, while orange points represent kernel matrices from abnormal bags. We see that using kernel distance, already we can separate normal from abnormal events. And when we use the fact that these matrices live on a cone manifold and use the Riemannian distance, we get better clustering. Normal points are clustered more closely together, while abnormal points are located away from the cluster centroid and in a less dense neighborhood. So it's worth noting here that blue points located away from the cluster correspond to anomalies in normal bugs, and orange points located in the cluster 
represent uh, normal events in abnormal bags. In this slide, we see a block diagram of our method. In first stage, we pre-process the multimodal data to produce a multivariate time series. We extract features from the images using a pre-trained uh, ResNet deep neural network and synchronize them with the IMU data. Then we calculate the distance metric that I talked about in the previous slides and we use it as a measure of abnormality. And finally, we can use basically any scoring method to get an anomaly score. So let's see some results. Here we see a video from a normal bag along with anomaly scores reported by our method. Although this bag is defined as normal, it has three events that can be considered abnormal. A person enters the scene from the right, the drone takes off and the drone lands. The first abnormal event is reflected in the video and the other two events are reflected mainly in the IMU data. Nonetheless, we can see that our method detects these three very different events correctly. And here is another video. This is an abnormal bug where the drone rolls from side to side. We see that our method detects this bug correctly as abnormal and also gives higher anomaly scores for the two cases where the drone rolls very quickly. So we have developed a user interface that allows us to compare performance and evaluate different hyperparameter values. So let's uh, now run this user interface live and show more results. So we can compare between the Euclidean metric and the Riemannian one. We can set various types of hyperparameters such as the window size and the number of uh, neighbors in the scoring method. So let's uh, compare using the area under rock curve. Um, this is a measure of, uh, of quality of results and can get values between zero and one when closer to one is better. So these are the results. As you can see with the Euclidean metric, we get an, an area under curve of uh, 0.63. And with the Riemannian one, we get area under curve of 0.97, the blue line here. So, so the Riemannian distance gives uh, superior results as expected. So let's go back to the presentation. To demonstrate that our method is data agnostic and generalized as well, we are now looking at another multimodal data set from the University of Texas. This is a data set for human action recognition through the fusion of video, wearable inertial sensor data, and skeleton estimated position collected by a Kinect camera. So for this experiment, we define the action of hand swipe left and hand swipe right as normal and define jogging as an abnormal action. As before, we preprocess the data into multivariate time series, apply the kernels and use the Riemannian distance as a measure of abnormality. And except for data passing, this did not require us to change a single line of code. And here are the results. Again, we visualize clustering with the Euclidean distance versus the Riemannian distance. We see that for this data set too, the Riemannian distance is superior as it results in a tight normal cluster and a better separation between normal and abnormal. These results are also reflected in the area under curve values with the Riemannian distance resulting in a much higher value than the Euclidean one. And again, without changing a single line of code. To summarize, in this video, we presented a novel framework for anomaly detection based on ongoing research in our lab. Our method achieved promising results on both the SPCAP dataset and another dataset. It has many advantages over competing methods. It is data agnostic and model free robust, online, computationally efficient, and can work with a limited amount of data. Finally, I would like to thank the organizers for this amazing event. Thank you.